Okay, in this video we're going to turn on the iPhone 4S for the first time. Now if you actually watched my previous video, which was an unboxing of this phone, you'll know that I actually did turn the phone on already. But before I went through the setup process, I turned it off again, and we're going to go through the setup process right now for the first time. So let's turn this phone on here. I'm going to press the power button up top, and the Apple logo comes on the screen. Now, I haven't actually switched over my AT&T number to this phone yet. I will be doing that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this phone as my main phone for one month. I was an Apple user in the past for about eight years. I was an Apple user, but that was before the iPhone came out. And since then, I've been using Android phones. But I thought this was a good opportunity for me as a reviewer to be a better reviewer if I actually used an iPhone for an extended period of time. Now the interesting thing is, is that right around the corner, the Nexus phone is coming out. The Galaxy Nexus is coming out on Verizon, and there might be a version on AT&T. We'll find out on October 19th. Now the rumored launch date for the Nexus phone is November 3rd. Now that falls smack in the middle of my iPhone trial period. So it's going to be interesting because I'm also going to get the Nexus Prime phone and I'm going to pit both of those phones against each other. So stay tuned for that. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go through the entire setup process on this phone and I will be activating it with AT&T shortly. But I want to go through this process first. So I'm just going to unlock the phone here. Now it wants me to choose a language here. It says welcome in all different languages here but obviously I'm speaking English so I want English and that's the default there so I'm just gonna click on that and I guess I hit the arrow up here for the next thing country or region United States is checked so I'm gonna click next up here then it says location services location services allows maps and other apps to gather and use data indicating your approximate location enable location services disable location services I don't care, I'll enable it, probably help me out and it'll be useful in some apps. So I'm going to hit enable location services and now I'm going to hit next. Okay, the next step was entering in my wireless information on my Wi-Fi network at my house here. So I did that and now it wants to set up the iPhone. Now, I don't know if I have to do the AT&T step yet, but uh, since it's on the Wi-Fi network, I don't think I do since it's connected uh, to the Apple servers and whatnot. So it says here, set up iPhone, choose to set up a new iPhone or restore from a backup. I've never owned an iPhone before, so it's a brand new iPhone. So it says set up as new iPhone. That's the default here, and I'm going to hit next. Okay, it says Apple ID. Your Apple ID is used to set up iCloud, App Store, iTunes Store, and more on your iPhone. Sign in with an Apple ID or create a free Apple ID. I do have an Apple ID um, for iTunes. I haven't used it in a while, so I hope I remember the login information on it. So I'll just go and sign in with an Apple ID here. Now the one thing I noticed when I was signing into my wireless network is this keyboard is something to get used to because on Android when you hit the shift key your representation of the, the letters there are either lowercase or uppercase and you know um, what you're in. Now obviously I think uh, the shift key highlights when you're in a, in a caps situation, when you're in an uppercase situation and is not highlighted when you're in a lowercase situation. But I actually prefer the representation on the letters themselves. And one thing I'd like to see, obviously you can get some aftermarket keyboards uh, for, for Android and, and whatnot, but one thing I'd like to see every mobile operating system adopt is a line of numbers so you don't have to switch to an alternate keyboard to do it. WebOS had it where, or at least the WebOS tablet, the touchpad, had it where you had a, a line of numbers up top. And I really think that that should be the standard for uh, mobile operating systems. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to enter in my Apple ID and then I'll join up with you after that's done. Okay, the next step here, it says birthday. Your birthday is used to determine appropriate services and retrieve your password if you forget it. So let me enter in my birthday and I'll join up with you when that's done. All right, my favorite part, terms and conditions. Let's just go all the way down here and agree to it, because if I don't agree to it, I can't use a phone, and uh, 
I'm really not interested in reading it. So terms and conditions, I agree to the iOS, iCloud, and Game Center terms and conditions, and the Apple privacy policy. I agree. And now it's signing into my Apple ID. It may take a few minutes. Now it wants me to set up iCloud. Now this is something I have no experience with at all. I know somewhat about iCloud, uh, but I've never actually used it before. It says, iCloud stores your photos, apps, contacts, calendars, and more, and wirelessly pushes them to your devices. Use iCloud, don't use iCloud. Well, being that this is my only iOS device, uh, I do have a fifth generation iPod Classic, but that's not an iOS device, that's just an Apple device. So why not? We'll try this iCloud out. Like I said, I want to submerse myself in the Apple ecosystem here just to try it out for a month. So I'll use iCloud here. I'm going to hit next. iCloud backup. Use iCloud to backup your phone daily over Wi-Fi. Backup to iCloud or backup to my computer. I'll back up to iCloud, why not? Hit next on this. Find my iPhone. If you misplace your iPhone, Find My iPhone can help you locate it on a map, play a sound, or display a message. Use Find My iPhone, don't use Find My iPhone. Why not? Like I said, I want to try all this out, so I'm going to find my iPhone and hit next. Now Siri, now this is one of the big deals of the iPhone 4S. You could probably loosely call this device the iPhone 4 Siri, since you can only get Siri on this device. The S probably stands for speed, as it did on the 3GS, but, you know, could stand for Siri on this device, who knows. It says, Siri helps you get things done just by asking. You can make a phone call, send a message, dictate a note, or even find a restaurant. Use Siri, don't use Siri. Of course I want to use Siri because it's one of the main things on this phone. So I'll use Siri and go to next. All right, the next thing is diagnostics. Diagnostics and usage. Automatically send, don't send. You know, I think it's a good idea. It helps the, the entire community when you do send diagnostic information on a phone because it helps them work out bugs, so definitely automatically send here. I'm going to hit next. Okay, it says registration. Register with Apple. Register this device to your Apple ID to stay up to date on product information and get faster access to support. Leave it on and hit next. Thank you. Your iPhone is now set up. You're ready to start using the most advanced iOS ever. Start using my iPhone. Let's go down here. And there we go. The Retina display is in full effect here. And like I said, I have some experience, you know, using other people's iPhones and using iPads, but this is my first time actually using an iPhone. So it's going to be interesting. Now, to give you a size comparison, I have my Motorola Atrix phone here, and I'm going to put them side by side. And you can actually see the difference in the screen sizes on both devices here and uh, this difference in the size on them as well. Now as you can see they're similar in size but let's put them and size them up to each other. The Atrix is a little bit wider. They're just about the same height pretty much spot on and the thickness on the device on both devices you can see that the iPhone is a little bit thinner than the Atrix there. Now, like I said, the big deal for me is going to be screen size here because, as you can see, the Atrix phone, which is a 4-inch screen, is quite a bit larger than the 3.5-inch screen on the iPhone 4S. It actually uh, takes up almost the entire phone compared to that. So it's going to take some getting used to, but, again, this is what it's all about, experiencing new things and trying something out. I'm going to try it out for a month. And at the end of that month period, or towards the end of that month period, we're actually going to pit this phone against the latest and greatest Android, which should be the Android Nexus Prime, or Galaxy Prime, or Galaxy Nexus, whatever they're going to call it. And uh, it's going to be interesting. So that pretty much does it for this video. I'll see you guys next time.